When Warner Brothers was sent the script for Hooper, it was titled The Stuntman. Want some breakfast? <gasps> God, look at that circumcised. <laughs> Warner Brothers came over and said, First, why don't you and Hal do the Hooper? Hal Needham told him not to do it because every stuntman in Hollywood would turn on him, as the lead was the most obnoxious, big mouth, no talent character ever written. What would you give for a little of that? Two nipples for a dime. <laughs> Sonny, that was terrific. No, that's terrific. So Burt changed the script and based Sonny Hooper on Hal right down to the wardrobe. Stuntmen have always been my favorite people in the picture business. Sonny, will you get me out of here? You bet you sweet Bippy. <laughs> Sonny, will you get serious? No time for that. <laughs> Bert started out as a stuntman even though he really wanted to be an actor. I did them for a long time because I didn't think I was that good of an actor. And I thought that if I was going to be paid the money that I was paid, I thought that I should take the chances. I want to make you an official stunt dog. I was an avid moviegoer when I was a young man. I loved movies. And it hurt me very deeply when I found out that there was such a thing as stuntmen. It's about a stuntman who's gotten to an age where he should retire. Every time I come to town, some young boy has got to try and make a name for himself. And there's a young stuntman coming along to, that's pushing him. So he pushes him into doing the, the greatest stunt in the world. The film they're making in Hooper is called The Spy Who Laughed at Danger and was clearly spoofing the 1977 James Bond film The Spy Who Loved Me. Years later, the great Roger Moore would star with Burt in Hal Needham's The Cannonball Run, spoofing his own James Bond character. You know something, Mama? You're too Jewish. One guy d did a jump out of a helicopter, 230 some feet, which was the world record. We're doing stunts, okay? <laughs> I put Burt on it. <laughs> On the outside of a helicopter, put the helicopter way out there and he's standing out on the strut, right? I mean, you're talking about a superstar, big, high, expensive actor, and had him come in on the helicopter and fall off and do a high fall at the air pad. Pride uh, is what'll kill you more than anything else or get you hurt. Uh, your mouth overlaps your, uh, your brain. You say, oh, I can do that. Well, when they saw it in dailies, I thought I'd be fired. When you jump 40 or 50 feet, it looks spectacular, and if you go into the airbag the wrong way, you can uh, break your neck. Without causing any commotion, I, I want to go see the doctor. The way you really can get up there in the big bucks is if you start inventing a stunt. What's your fee for a gag like that? A car roll run starts at a thousand and goes up. It was the first guy to take a bike into a moving car. He got a lot of money for that. A high fall is anywhere from, say, $12 a foot and on up. The fire stunt will start at $1,000. Car jumps is another story. It's the world's biggest stunt. It ought to have the world's biggest paycheck. See, uh, right. see how fast we can go. Right. Any problems with that spot I should know about? Just a lot of good luck. <laughs> okay. All, all the noise, all the talk, everything, quiet. If you go with it, you have fun with it, then you're going to be all right. But if you just try to play it safe, it's, it's not going to be any good. And your adrenaline is pumping, and you forget about the fact that your legs are shaking, and they're just... Your arms are getting pulled out of the socket, and you forget about all that. Adrenaline is the lifesaver of us all anyway. When Hal Needham directs a film, the stunts need to be perfect, and he had no problem getting in there and doing them himself. I wanted a, a point of view as Bert was getting ready to slide underneath the truck, and all the stuntmen were going, I said, ah, give me the helmet. So I went out there with my slacks and s slippers on and everything, no pads, and I put the camera on and slid underneath the truck. He's also a guy that when you do the stunt, he probably could do it better. But what it does is it keeps the stuntmen honest. I mean, every day you look around and go, we better do this right because if we don't, old Hal will get in the clothes and do it himself, you know? Of course, it gives the studio a heart attack. <laughs> you think we're bad? You should see that guy. Hell, in my ear. James Best, who plays Hooper's closest friend in the picture, was Bert's acting instructor from the early days and also a very good friend. No, listen, get your hands off. You're messing up my wardrobe. He's an older stunt man who's a little bit over the hill, and Bert sort of lets him hang on. That's a bitch you can hit. Best was in two James Stewart films and does a hilarious imitation of Stewart for Bert in this scene. Hey, I'll do Jimmy Stewart and you do, you do uh, Roy Rogers shot. Roy, you think? <laughs> James Best went on to play Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane in the popular series The Dukes of Hazard, loosely based on Smokey and the Bandit. 
We'll go together. You look one way, I'll look the other. We'll go together. All right, let's go together. In her third film with Bert, Sally Field again plays his girlfriend. Gee, you never feed me a can of beer like that. You don't shake it up and down like that. Oh, that's very true. But her character has more depth as she struggles to convince Hooper to quit doing dangerous stunts. I'm quitting after this picture. I'm not doing any more stunts. I'm going to hang it up. One of the goals of this picture was to show how very difficult the life of a Hollywood stuntman is. Somebody got this still, obviously during a break. I hope this is during a break in the movie or, and not a scene to show you that really you and Terry are really good friends. <laughs> is this a, a We've been seeing a lot of each other. <laughs> we may be in trouble. Even an athlete at the very top of his game could appreciate the hard work that goes into these scenes. That's always the shock to athletes. The Terry Bradshaw, the kind of part in the picture, and we have a big fight scene. In two days, I think I, he looked like he'd been in the Super Bowl without pads. Holy shit, a fight! His athletic ability really saved his life a couple of times. You ain't ever going to learn, are you, dummy? One time he had to jump through a candy glass window and land on top of a bunch of boxes and uh, he got so excited he just completely missed everything and landed in the street. <laughs> Alfie Wise, another actor with long-standing ties to Bert, plays the director's assistant, Tony. Do me a favor, will you? Yeah, what is it? Would you bring me a stepladder about this high? Yeah, what for? I want you to climb up on it and kiss my ass. <laughs> See you later, Toulouse. Hooper wasn't the only film where Bert made fun of Alfie's height. I'm taking delivery on my new cigarette boat today. Oh, Oliver, you shouldn't get a cigarette boat. It'll stunt your growth. <laughs> ha! It was definitely a long-running tradition. Yeah, look what we got here, a miniature cop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you look different. Where's your glasses? Contacts. Too bad I didn't make you look taller. What are you doing here? This is not little theater. I know people down at City Hall, bigger people than you. In other words, normal-sized people. You want to try for something else? Yeah, I'm going to make you taller. Oh! And just to keep my eye on things, just in well, case. Well, get a ladder. I knew they had midget wrestling matches. I didn't know they had midget boxing matches. Any of you guys seen Hooper? Down here, short legs. Oh, hey, pal, can you talk to me? Stand up. Sorry, you are standing. Life is too short. So are you. In this scene, Hooper shows his friends a stunt reel containing a young Burt Reynolds being thrown from a canoe, taken right from his breakout performance in Deliverance. Yeah, now that some bitch knows how I felt when he came. Dad? What? The language. Oh, amazing. shit. Sorry. Nor is it degenerate, you know. Burt is the number one, and Jan is the new kid in town. Then he looked good. Yeah, he looked good. Jan Michael Vincent was perfectly cast as the young hotshot stuntman Ski, the character who pushes the older legend to perform stunts he should have avoided in his condition. From the looks of them beer cans, I'd say you two guys were a little drunk. Looks ain't deceiving, you old fart. Vincent was the first choice to play Hooper. Not Sonny Hooper, but Matt Hooper in Jaws. That would not have worked as well, but Vincent went on to have a great career, highlighted by the series Airwolf that ran for three seasons. And I'm learning to drink and liking it. Years of drugs and alcohol abuse stalled his potential. I just called my mother, and uh, she's going to come out here and pick us up and take us home, and I'm going to leave the car here and go home with my mother. <laughs> I, I just want to be someone that people care about watching, and I feel I'm a good actor. In 1996, he was in a near-fatal car accident and was never the same. You know, I don't even have idea what you're talking about. Oh, look what we got here. Howdy, hey, old fuck. I don't remember being in an accident, but I remember it, about it. He lost his leg after getting a blood disease, adding to his issues. Jan Michael Vincent died in 2019 from a heart attack at the age of 73. Where's Mr. Movie? Right here. Oh, good morning. Oh, good morning, Roger. Cold winter morning in New York. I'm curled up in my bed in womb position, having a sex dream, invariably. <laughs> maybe, maybe not actually, but symbolically. Hot dogs chasing donuts through the Lincoln Tunnel. Whatever, it's a sex dream. <laughs> 
Comedian Robert Klein played the director in the film Roger Deal and was loosely based on Peter Bogdanovich, who Bert had worked with twice before. Hooper, you can rap for the day. How is this done, okay? Yes. That good, huh? Yeah. Would you go so far as to say perfect? Well, that's what he's supposed to be, isn't he? Yeah, these stuntmen break their bones and their nose is bleeding and he's the type of guy that... Take it again, please. Action! And a little more emotion, if possible, you know, that sort of thing. Unless I can shoot this picture the way I want to, then I take a walk. It's a wonderful part. It stands out. I'm the only one in the film with good diction. This line was specifically paraphrased from remarks by Bogdanovich. But films are tiny pieces of time. Now, when I was a wee little shit, my mother took me to see Hooper in the theater and covered my eyes for this scene. Thankfully, I was able to see it on HBO several years later. It was, it's an un unbelievable picture for stunts. They were getting ready to destroy 72 acres of brick buildings. There's a lot of towns that should be blown up. That's what they call urban renewal. The climactic huge stunt sequence referred to by the crew as Damnation Alley included the destruction of World War II military hospital in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. This is not good, it's not safe. Bobby Bass had his act so together, he had his men so rehearsed, I'd get ready to go and we'd do a setup where normally it would take a director two or three days to do something that we'd do in one shot. Now this gas station is where uh, you'll force one of those cars chasing you uh, to hit those pumps. I mean, we just tore blue things all to hell over there. I call Hal Needham Dr. Danger. If anything is safe, he'll try to make it dangerous. Please get behind me! After most of the hospital buildings were demolished for the filming, the lot was cleared and the University Mall complex was built on the site. This is the tag of the movie. I'm gonna hit it! Jumping 400 and some feet in a car across the cap, which was a silly stunt to do. They got a lot of money for it. Those guys are not here now. They're in a home. <laughs> <laughs> At the 2007 Taurus World Stunts Awards ceremony, Burt was honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award, not for his acting, but for his stunt work in film. You know, I used to say if I could get a Heisman Trophy, I'd rather have that than a, an Oscar. I never had a problem, because there wasn't going to be a shot at either one. I'd rather have one of these. These guys that do what they do, I'm... A huge fan of theirs. They're my heroes. Never wanted to be John Wayne. Wanted to be Hal Needham. Against the six million dollar budget, Hooper grossed 78 million, proving once again that Burt was box office gold. Watch for new movie reviews and documentary series. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell so you know when new reviews arrive.